Good morning, everybody. Good morning and welcome morning. to this Zoom call, everyone, with uh, Dr. Sharon Dickerson. And I'm so glad that you're all here. Oh my gosh, I haven't seen you guys for a while. But first, I want to preface this whole call by saying this is an informational call. We're sharing information from different aspects of uh, biological dentistry, holistic dentistry, energy dentistry, and so on and so forth. So it's not a healing session. Like what we do here does not replace actual medical care and dental care. So if you need to see your dentist, please do, even though it may be painful. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, that's what I used to associate with um, dentistry. So you guys, everyone, I know that every one of you um, has received my newsletters. Otherwise, you would not be here. You would not be joining me if you didn't have my newsletter. So you read... Uh, Dr. Dickerson's bio and all, so I just want to uh, introduce her in a different way and tell you how, how I uh, come to work with her. So a couple years ago, I think I was having issues with one of my tooth, and the other dentist I went to just wants me to just take it out and get an implant and this and that, and for whatever reason, it didn't sound right, so I was looking for different options. In my very first consultation with Dr. Dickerson, I saw this chart of like meridians and, and teeth. And I'm like, oh my God, that's the chart I use. And then the, she started talking about the energy of implants. I'm like, she actually talks about energy like, oh my God, <laughs> does she know what I do? <laughs> and so, from that moment on, I just feel like, oh my God, and all these things she knows and does, uh, so many things. So, so I'm going to just invite Dr. Dickerson to tell us a little bit about how someone who is trained at a very formal institution like the University of Michigan, how you got into all, all the alternatives at all the other components to your uh to your work that that is just amazing to me because i i have not met anyone who talks to me about teeth and energy like the way you did and i was like oh my god does she even know what i do <laughs> <laughs> well she does know but <laughs> Now I do. Well, thank you, Grace, for the inter uh, chance to introduce myself. I'm Dr. Sharon Dickerson. It's such a pleasure to be here and meet all of you this morning. And Grace, to your question about my journey, you know, I could, about my I could spend a bit of time on that, but I just want to give you the broad stro strokes that kind of lead to what you had asked about. So one major influence in my growing up was my father, who was a dentist in, in Michigan, University of Michigan graduate. And I had the opportunity to be around him in his office a lot. And he was a very holistic thinker. He thought he and my mother were very, um, very uh, much into whole, whole health. And we had different nutritional programs that roamed through the house as the years went on and things developed. But he approached his patients, even in the 1970s, in a much more, I mean, whole body way. So that was a primary influence. The downside for going growing up in that era was there was a lot of mercury amalgam material being used. And I grew up assisting him as a teenager in the office, literally playing with the cool material of mercury on the countertops because it's such an interesting material to play with. I don't think we, uh, we obviously didn't understand its toxic potential. But as time went on and I became a dentist and I was probably around 30 years old, I started, started a family, um, you know, full-time practice. I had some pretty serious health issues that, that came up. This would have been in the early 1990s. And it was one of those situations where most of the traditional medicine uh, people that I consulted with couldn't really give me an answer. It's like, of course, you're a young mom, you 
you know, you're not feeling good. You're dragging. I had pain all over my body. I felt brain fog. But even in the 1990s, I was able to find, I kept looking and found a, a, at that time, I don't know what they were called. I don't think we had functional medicine as a terminology, but it was a, um, a DO practice that was looking at a lot more body chemistry and trying to tie things together. And we found out that I had high, high levels of heavy metal toxicity, primarily mercury. So at that time, I got really engrossed in, you know, how do you, how do you take that out of your body safely? And then it kind of melded into, you know, my own health in terms of nutrition and um, what was going to be viable for me in terms of, you know, exercise and fitness routines. And it all sort of came together and I did get through that time. Um, but it, it got me on a path of looking at things from a much more systemic um, standpoint. But my big question then was, how am I going to still function in this profession when I'm charged with removing these, you know, dental amalgams, which are the silver grayish fillings that many, many people have in their mouths, 50% or more of the, that product is mercury, which is an extremely toxic material. It is said to be the most toxic non-radioactive substance on planet earth. And we have it in our mouths. And so there's a lot of a lot of questions about that, but I was concerned about, I'm not going to place these in people's mouths at all anymore. This was in the 1990s, but how am I going to keep my patients and my staff and my health intact when I'm still in the midst of that material, having to grind it out of people's teeth? So that's really where it started, Grace and everybody else uh, for me. And once I understood the problems with mercury in the fillings, then I joined certain um, groups of dentists who are looking at all the toxic potential of different products in dentistry. And then my path just went on from there, really looking at um, how teeth are connected to the whole body. And um, boy, it's been a journey of, of, of many decades now because you don't necessarily get that vantage point when you're in dental school. And there's not a board certified credential that makes you a holistic or a, bi a biological dentist or a functional dentist. So this is all something that the dentist seeks out just by their own interest. And, um, and it is actually very fascinating. Once I started to learn about it, I realized this is the, the area of dentistry I wanted to practice in. Yeah, and, and it was so interesting to hear you talk about uh, just the energetic difference of implants. And you had told me, because my other dentist was pushing for me to do this uh, titanium implant, because I thought, oh, titanium, that sounds strong, how neat, blah, blah, blah. And I was like telling you about it, and you go, no, that's not energetically compatible. And then you started telling me about, go ahead, tell, tell them. Okay, other so yeah, that is a... Um... I want to reference some resources for everybody as we go through our conversation today, today, because the different areas that we'll talk about have different people who have studied that particular track at, at length and legitimized our protocols. So the, the one individual is a Dr. Jerry Tennant, T-E-N-N-A-N-T. And he's an ophthalmologist, but if you ever, if you can get a hold of his book, um, it's called Healing is Voltage. His own story about his health and dentistry and his health issues is fascinating in itself. But what I started to learn from him tied to, I had uh, my, I have my own experience with, through my health journey with many different types of practitioners. And one in Chinese medicine has been a significant one for me. So I'm sure many of you are introduced to energy, I'm sorry, like Chinese medicine. And in, in acupuncture, they, they work with these meridians, which are the circuits in our body that really power and supply our organ systems. And so developmentally, how this ties to the teeth is that when the embryo in, you know, in the womb is forming, these circuits start from the, the developing brain circuits from the brain and it goes as it starts to develop down into the organ systems the, the little embryos growing it goes through specific teeth 
So very, very directly, our teeth are connected along these meridian lines, and it is mapped out through the thousands of years of Chinese medicine and has been borne out even in, it's just an, um, it's a circuit that you can navigate and, and map out. So when you picture going through, you know, these energy circuits go through these teeth and through the bone around the teeth, when there's a, um, an interference in that system, and that can come from even a dental cavity, a dental infection, it can come from a material that's metal that is a block of that energy. And what happens is that those interferences quite literally um, really act as a resistance and it's difficult for the voltage to flow through there and the, the voltage will just drop. So it's even worse when there's infection in the bone around the tooth. It just at, literally acts like a circuit breaker and it turns the circuit off. So that's one of the ways that we know that dental infections are tied to systemic disease because then it starts to affect your, your entire bodily function. And it's very interesting when you have a patient with a, a, a dental infection in a specific tooth and you look at that organ chart and I mean, it's not every single time, but it's very common that we'll find that there's an area of their body that they're struggling with. And it's often at least contributory from the dental component. So Grace, when you asked about the dental implants, I guess just in case somebody's not familiar, a dental implant is an artificial man-made screw that literally is put, uh, screwed into the jawbone to replace the root of the tooth. And then a crown or an artificial tooth can be placed on top of it. So it's actually a, a really amazing advanced technology to have these dental implants because the way that we replace missing teeth in the past, all of them have pros and cons. But when a person's body can heal around a dental implant, that can be a really great substitute. And titanium is a material that's been used and it has how, how most dental implants have developed. And it works well in the body to a certain extent. But when we think about it from an energy perspective, it is a quite literally a block on that meridian. And I don't understand under, uh, Chinese medicine enough to know how our body recircuits. I'm sure there are people on here that understand that a lot better than I do. But what we there's a, also a parallel um, technology that's coming through with zirconium oxide or zirconia dental implants. And these are white and zirconium oxide is an electrically neutral, it's a biocompatible ceramic and it doesn't show any interference field characteristics. So that's developing within the field. There are, it's a lot of technology that has to come into play. And in the United States, most of the major implant companies are developing their version of that. And they're coming along really well. And it's like anything else, you have to weigh out some of the disadvantages of that material. You have to really be careful of picking the right patient and their health um, and their bite and how it's going to function in the mouth. But that's, I think, Grace, it was very pertinent discussion when you first came in because that decision, you were right on the crux of that decision. And um, yeah. for you, that turned out to be pretty important. And, and, you know, what else was important? That was like a huge difference that was never even offered to me. And my other dentist was this piece that I was concerned about. I was really concerned about the implant, the surgery itself as well, because in the past I have had uh, reactions to antibiotics that will be a natural part of uh, surgery. Mm -hmm. And you had offered me options that made sense. And I remember getting IV vitamin C as well as uh, some antibiotics like usual. And then another, I think homeopathic formula to re-engage my parasympathetic system. Mm -hmm. And so you combine alternatives, homeopathy and all. And I just remember the difference. I felt like at four or 6 p.m., I feel like, oh my God, I should be taking my aspirin because by now all the pain stuff should be wearing off. And I was so surprised that the pain level was only at like a two. I was expecting it to be at a six or eight and to be, you know, getting an excuse to give myself more pain medication. <laughs> but, and I thought, oh, I'm going to be a zombie. I got this 
you know, prescription right. stuff. And I don't want to, yeah, so, but I didn't need all that. I mean, I, I took one aspirin. I didn't need the four, whatever that you took home. So I thought that just makes so much sense to me. And I did not have a reaction to the antibiotics, the IV antibiotics you gave me because you kind of took care of it. Uh, what, what um, Dr. Uh, the other Dr. Old, yeah, Dr. Pop. Dr. Pop, the oral surgeon, mm -hmm. you guys make good choices around how to manage all that stuff. And, and I really appreciated that because it was never offered to me uh, by any oral surgeon or dentist I ever been to. Yeah. Well, I think you know, there's a couple other elements that be, that were a part of why that healing went so well for you. Um, you mentioned the IV. I think that by the high dose vitamin C is is really really important and helpful. Um, when that kind of surgery is done from a biological dental standpoint, um, there's a certain lasers that are very uh, effective at disinfecting the area where the surgery is happening. So there's usually infection in the bone. The tooth comes out, there's a socket that needs to be very well cleaned. Um, the use of oxygen ozone is another wonderful tool to bring um, oxygen to the area and debacterialize de the area. And then we, uh, we would normally use your own blood byproducts through PRF. It's a platelet rich fibrin. It's extracted from your blood and it's spun in a centrifuge to give you your own growth factors and platelets and stem cells that are what is used as a graft material into that socket or that site at the time of surgery. So I think all of those things play together to make, we're just trying to make sure your body is, is poised to heal well with the least amount of trauma. And um, so I think those are all the things that you noticed. And for our... German and Swiss friends that are on the call, uh, one of the um, premier institutions in the in around the globe that I think is very much on the forefront of these techniques and technologies is in Kreuzingland, Switzerland, called Swiss Biohealth, and they have a, a lot of material that you can access online. And um, um, th 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 I could go on and on with that. There's a cohort. To Swiss Biohealth, Dominic, Dr. Dominic Nieschwitz. Um, this book of his, can you guys see that? It's all in your mouth. Okay. And Biological Dentistry and the Surprising Impact of Oral Health on Whole Body Wellness. Um, he, he's putting out a lot of really good content in short bites through um, Instagram and different social media. So there's a lot of the best technology is coming, in my opinion, from um, Switzerland and Germany, but it is picking up here in the United States. There are more and more dentists trained. Can name again? Uh, I, I saw the title, but I didn't see his name. Oh, Dominic okay. Nischwitz. It's N-I-S-C-H-W-I-T-Z. He goes by Dr. Dome, D-O-M-E, online, because it's too much of a mouthful for some of us. Okay. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my God. Yeah. And, and, and also another thing was, um, that you talk about if I wanted to, to get some IV support, uh, cause we live in, I live in Denver. Yeah. Uh, these, um, IV lab. No, they don't call it labs. They call them hydration bars. Right, right. And I go in and I get uh, a Myers cocktail. Yes. Uh, and, and you suggest that going there, getting something, some sort of a whole body support, like the Myers cocktail yes. before or after uh, surgery. And I did that. I I did it before and after. And, and I really yes. noticed that the healing was like, wow. And yeah. I, believe uh, how what a difference it makes so well grace yeah. i think it would be kind of a missed a, a miss to not mention uh my other ties with swiss biohealth because my dental journey has some colorful uh colorful aspects to it and i grew up as you know with a dentist uh, as my father and i had great dental care but i had a problem with the way my jaws developed that caused me chronic TMJ and bite issues. So after many rounds of braces at about age 40, I had a lot of dental work done that was aimed at 
in improving and correcting my bite problems. And it worked really great. It's a, pro it's a process called oral nathic bioaesthetics. And I had that treatment done, which at that time, 20 years ago, ended up with a lot of crowns on my teeth that were made to an entirely different bite. And it corrected my TMJ issues to this day, but my body did not react well to the trauma of having that dental work done so that I ended up after that with a, many, many root canal treated teeth. And the more I've learned about all of that, the more I realized that each root canal was its own energy block and they were all infected to various degrees, which that's a whole other thing we could talk about is the problem with potential problems with root canal teeth. So I just past November ended up going to Switzerland to have a, a very extensive oral surgery done where um, 11 different teeth were removed and the zirconium implants were placed immediately into those sites. Temporary crowns were put on and I stayed all week and had all their healing modalities that really supported uh, my bone healing, kept the inflammation down. I never had one nar narcotic after that whole surgery. Um, their homeopathic really? um, tinctures that were in the IVs were amazing. Um, so I'm very much um, walking the talk, I guess you'd say. And it, it's interesting because my own health journeys have taken me on these different paths, which I think is not uncommon for a lot of us. When you get into an alternative mode, it's usually because something took you there, whether it's just a, a family member or your own health or you're just curious, but for many people, it's a personal story. And it certainly is for me. Yeah. And like what, what I do with um, energy healing, mm -hmm. I work on the subconscious issues and emotional issues behind dental issues. And I, so I think this would be a good point to uh, a good part to just, uh, for me to do some healing because I know that your story resonates with nearly everybody's. So I want to thank you all, you guys, 112 of you who turn in responses to that questionnaire. And many of you were so completely vulnerable about all the issues you've been through. So I just want to thank you for that. And in response to all your responses, I'm going to take a moment to just tune into all of you and do a quick healing of the teeth, all the meridians connected to the teeth. And then we'll come back to more specific questions and stuff that you have for Dr. Dickerson. Would that be okay? All right. So just take a gentle breath. And if you like, be comfortable. And I'm just going to start some energy healing work with all of you. And I'm going to start with the very back teeth first, and those are all related to, in Chinese medicine, the fire element meridians, heart, pericardium, triple burner, which is highly correlated with the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, and small intestine. So I'm going to start with the fire element meridians, and they are the very back uh, molars and wisdom tooth. And sometimes when I work on these very back teeth, what comes up for some people can be past life issues that require healing. So I'm just gonna send some energy to the family constellation space of your life. Whoa. So now I'm going to move to premolars, that is stomach and spleen meridian. And stomach and spleen meridian is about the energy of nurturing and receiving, like the archetypal energy of the counselor. And many of you on this call are awesome, amazing healers. So if you have issues with these teeth, it's probably that you're in relationships or you're such a giver or you're a giver most of your life. So this, so that giving and receiving is out of balance. So wherever that's out of balance in your life, let's clear that. And as most of you know, stomach and spleen issues also go back to the 
receiving in the very beginning of your life. And those of you who have bonding issues with your parents, this is where the, these are the teeth that where those issues show up, the lack of bonding, lack of safety at home. Actually, that impacts all teeth. So if you have been having dental issues since you were young, it's the lack of bonding issues that create your body, your stomach, especially the lining of the stomach becomes more acidic when you're under stress, right? So cortisol, and that has a way of eroding the enamel. And so let's, so all the underlying emotional issues that brings up for you all, let's clear what we can clear for you around receiving and bonding or lack of bonding. So let's see if we can just clear some of that. Good. And the next couple of teeth is um, related to the pancreas. And as all of you know, the pancreas is all about joy or lack of joy. Lack of joy from having to be overly responsible for everything and everyone. I think that's the story with anyone who's a healer or teacher. So this is your meridian, you guys. Well, the pancreas is not a meridian, but uh, just tapping into, but it's highly related to the pancreas. So stomach, spleen, and pancreas are closely related. I'm just going to work on all three. Oh. And then with all the premolars, it's long and large intestine meridian. And as you all know, that's all about inspiration and creativity. And for most of us, somewhere in our growing up years, that gets repressed because how you see the world as visionaries that you all are, may not get validation in this world where everybody just follows the rules, you know. So those of you who are visionaries and have that visionary energy, you may have issues with the um, premolars and even molars because you feel repressed you're not able to follow through completely with what inspires you. And everything having to do with COVID, by the way, imp impacts the molars the most for whatever reason. I even read an article about how in the two years that COVID was huge, huge, huge. There's a lot of people with broken molars, grinding, teeth grinding. So, and that makes sense when you feel when you have the mask, when your choice is so compromised, right? Because that affects your creative energy. And let's release everything that brings up and everything that the C word brings up. All right. So let me just get to the next meridians. I think that's uh, so premolar. How about? bicuspics. Okay, let's turn into the energy of the bicuspics and I think oh, that is kidney bladder meridian. And this is like I'm so interested in this teeth and, and I, I can't believe that in some cultures having your teeth all straighten is not pretty. They need to have it kind of like stagger so that the uh, bicuspic becomes more prominently out here. And in another culture, I know, I think it's in uh, Bali, where when a woman comes of age, that tooth gets filed down. And as you all know, kidney meridian, um, we call it, it's about longevity, but that's actually a cold word for sexual energy. <laughs> so anywhere we, in Chinese medicine where you see, oh, take this herb, take that herb, it supports longevity. What they mean is 
gives you good sexual energy so you can live forever and like for the man father village of children even when you're 102 that sort of a thing but don't go do that but anyway it's amazing how um in so many ways people understand the energetics of two even though they don't come out and say it that way. So that's why like that by cosmic is such an interesting tea to me. The vampire, right? Y you can see how that uh, tooth is more prominent in a vampire. Not that I look in a vampire before, but you all know what I mean. <laughs> so, um, so you have issues with this tooth, but it's also about energy, everyday energy, because it's your adrenals, kidney, adrenals, bladder, so the water element and water element is also associated with wisdom. So the teacher archetype. And let's just clear everything around there. And in the energy map of your life in what the Chinese call your Bagua, the water element is career and calling. So if you've been having issues of deciding and career, finding your life purpose, somehow that teeth may begin to feel funny if you're, you're off path. So I'm gonna clear the energy around that, that tooth and everything associated with it, which is career and calling. Kidney meridian, bladder meridian, kidneys is also this, uh, the seat of yuan qi, which is source energy. And that means in everyday languages, your DNA, your heritage. So all the unhealed, unresolved issues that impact you or the traumas in your family, especially father's side. I'm gonna clear that now. Oh. Then now we're going to get to the front teeth, all the uh, incisors, upper and lower. So that's the um, liver, gallbladder, meridian. And when it's out of balance, you know, there's anger or repress anger, which is the one emotion nobody's allowed to express ever. Especially if you're a people pleaser. So if you had a lot of issues around that, and I know that also creates a lot of uh, jaw issues and stuff. And Deb, I don't know how you work with people with jaw issues who are so angry, but so my rofer, awesome rofer and craniosacral therapist, Deb is there. And Deb, I'm gonna let you speak in just a moment so you can, tell people what you do with TMJ and, and, and stuff and, and what you find, because I know that you're really, really intuitive and I don't know that you get to even talk about all the stuff that you're able to tune into about people. Yeah, so let this energy that I just started keep on doing its thing, but I wanna hear Deb for a moment. So I'm gonna unmute you, Deb, so that you can tell people what you do as a awesome role for in craniosacral therapist. Hey, Deb. Hello. I tell everybody you? about you. <laughs> Great. Uh, yeah, so I um, worked with Grace and I do rolfing structural integration and craniosacral therapy. And so a lot of times when I'm working in the head and the jaw, I go between a balance of working on the myofascial areas and then I tune into the cranial system and how the cranial bones are moving and how that motility is and where things are bound up. Um, a lot of times uh, the TMJ is, I work with the masseter and I work in the pterygoids inside the mouth. And a lot of times it's related to uh, the jaw, the muscles under the jaw. So getting those open and cleared and then working up into the temporals and then balancing the whole jaw, which connects up into the temporals and you can feel, I can feel pulling in other parts of the cranial system. So it's all about um, balancing the cranial system and using that motility of, of what I feel there. And then in the myofascial system and some of those muscles and getting those 
at the insertion points to release a little bit so that there's more space in there so that there's more openness for things to move through the cranium. Thank you. Yeah, I definitely feel like I was able to really open my mouth at, without hurting. And, and that makes such a, a difference because I, I used to dread having those x-rays inserted in my mouth and I would just be choking on them all the time. But I noticed that after working with you, that was not an issue anymore. Great. Yeah. Uh, so that, yes, yeah, so I think you do really amazing, awesome work. And I just want everybody to be introduced to you. And and you're welcome to put in the chat box your contact information in case anybody needs to see you. But okay. you guys, she's in Denver. So if you're not in Denver, she's not going to be able to do adjustments over the phone. <laughs> or with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't. I haven't mastered that yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> oh, thank you. Okay. Well, Grace, I, I'm wondering if it's if it's a, a good time to kind of merge the other aspect of how the oral health affects the whole body, which yeah. we talked about energy, which is is it's not separate from, but I think dental infections or oral infections are really um, oftentimes a, a, a root cause of many other ailments. We're learning more and more about that with um, lots of research coming out. Uh, the, the dental industry has acknowledged that in certain respects as more clinical trials have come out. Inflammation in the body, anywhere in the body is directly related to increased risk for cardiovascular disease. We know that. So when there's gum disease or decay or infected teeth, it's d directly correlated, if not cause and effect of the majority of heart attacks and many cancers, according to, I'm going to show you another book by a, a cardiologist named Dr. Thomas Levy, and it's called The Hidden Epidemic. It's a very uh, well sourced book. He's he had found in his practice of cardiovascular um, surgeries that meant really he started to see the correlation between root canal treated teeth and people who were having heart attacks and dying from it. And so he states on the on his cover that silent oral infections cause most heart attacks and breast cancers, which is quite a statement. But he has all the research to um, back it up, and I think it's very interesting. Um, and so I think that we need to take it very seriously. What's happening in the mouth and its connection to our bloodstream, our lymphatic system. These teeth are, are little, I think of them as little organs. They have a blood supply, they have a nerve supply that is very much integrated with the rest of our circulatory system, the rest of our lymphatic system. So when they are anaerobic, toxic, uh, microbes living in those areas around our teeth, inside our teeth, uh, it's going to be, it's going to get into your bloodstream. And so all the things about ever, you know, some people can sustain that and stay healthy if they have a root canal for their lifetime, but they probably have, you know, a very robust immune system in other ways and their body is, is managing it well. But for many people, it can be a, a real critical point in their health when something like an oral infection or a root canal comes into play and um and it sometimes goes unnoticed because the way our medical model is we're not always bringing medicine and dentistry together so that's really what biological dentistry is attempting to do or you might call it um holistic dentistry Another term that's emerging is called functional dentistry, which is really looking at the root cause of, of somebody's health or wellness or illness. If so, if they're healthy and doing great, you'll usually see that in their mouth. If they're not, I think more and more physicians and cardiologists and functional medicine physicians are, are tuning into how important it is for people to also look at their oral health and, and assess that. And that's really where we come into play. So the majority of my referrals come from 
other practitioners who are working through health issues with their patients and are finding many times the patients are stuck in uh, after they've already, you know, really taken care of working on their gut health, working on the showing up their immune system and all the different ways that they can, you know, supplementation and protocols, um, gaps, diets, and all kinds of things. But if they're, if they're really struggling, they'll often say, go, you need to go look at what's going on in your mouth. Now, um, so many of our referrals are patients who are already in a, a process of trying to treat chronic Lyme disease, mold toxicity, various all other autoimmune dysfunctions, um, cancers, heart diseases, these kinds of issues. Uh, I, I, I'm hoping that as time goes on, we learn that the dental exam would be really important to do sooner in that process because many times people are fighting a battle and don't understand, haven't discovered yet that there's a root cause source that's coming from some kind of oral problem. Yeah, and so Dr. Dickerson, I know that um, on the responses I got from everyone who responded, that was a big concern. So for people who already had root canals, is there a way to take care of it so that they don't have to worry about um, all these issues. Can a root canal be safe? Um, what are all the options around it? Yeah, that is a big topic. And um, I've, I've been all the way around the block on it because as a dentist, you do, you see teeth that have had trauma. There's dentistry done that that's an attempt to restore teeth. And these things add up sometimes to where the nerve and inside the tooth cannot heal itself and regenerate itself. It's a mm -hmm. difficult part of the body to heal because it's encased in, in the tooth structure, the enamel and the dentin. So they can't really swell and bring, bring a lot of blood supply inside of a tooth. So once teeth have a struggle healing, or they get just, you know, enough decay that there's infection inside the tooth, the body just really can't sometimes um, help itself in that way. So the root canal removes the vital tissue from inside the tooth. It's these tiny little instruments that literally take out the nerves and the capillaries and the blood supply that, that are what keep the tooth alive. And then it, in place of those little chambers is a, a material place that is kind of like a latex material. Mm -hmm. And so now you have this part of the body that's now disconnected from the body. There's no source of immune system or of any you know, nourishment for the tooth. Teeth have constant blood, blood supply and flow when they're vital. So the problem with this now is you have this quite literally a devital or a dead body part in your body. And it's not just that it's not vital, it's that it still has a lot of microanatomy that will become um, really uh, infested with different microbes that are pathogenic to us or so harmful bacteria, viruses, molds, fungus that can live inside those little tiny um, chambers within the root system and, and kind of propagate there. And as you chew and function with your teeth, you're putting pressure on those areas and it literally is expressing the toxins from the bacterial load into your lymphatic system and therefore into your bloodstream. So this is a source over time, and it usually doesn't get better over time. These, these dead teeth just become more kind of infected over time so that as time goes on, your body might take care of it for a while, but then it can sort of be a tipping point when, so, when anything else comes in that's a challenge to your immune system. Mm. So many of us in, in the biological dental world you know, would say that somebody really needs to understand that before having a root canal so they can make a, an informed choice. Sometimes it's, you know, even in my world, there are still times when a root canal is an appropriate treatment for all kinds of different reasons. Like the person's health really isn't good enough to have the oral surgery necessary to remove the tooth or, mm -hmm. um, they, it's a very front tooth and they can't, they have a wedding next week. You know, I mean, there's different reasons why you might go with a root canal, knowing that you, 
you might want to go back. And the only other option really is to remove that tooth. Mm. So that's when we get into who's going to, you know, how is that going to be done? What are you going to do in place of that tooth? And that's kind of a whole nother, a whole nother topic, but more and more, I'm finding that um, at least the patients that come to me and they're usually fairly um, educated with um, their health and they've done a lot of things already to be really healthy. When they, when they get this kind of information, they'll choose something besides a root canal most of the time. Okay. And so this brings us to the question about prevention and diet. When I was looking into um, healing teeth and all that, I remember a study saying how you shouldn't eat grains and cereals because they become phytic acid and phytic acid is the one thing in modern diet that wasn't you know ancestors diet that's creating us all to have uh, bad teeth and cavity is that true you know grace i'm not I love my oatmeal oh. yeah i'm not specifically tuned into the phytic acid in general but i do know that there are many foods that are that are acidic and change the ph of our saliva usually they're going to be things you think of as um carbohydrate rich foods uh coffee in the morning um alcohol most alcoholic beverages are pretty hot you know pretty low in ph and it does affect your saliva and so when it's an acidic a more acidic environment and the bacteria that live around our teeth can flourish in that environment that's really going to cause a lot of additional acid production from the bacteria toxicity that's really what leads to cavities the way, the best way we can kind of um, understand it. Mm, okay. So, you know, I've been kind of hearing what you were hearing about that phytic acid in specifically, but I think it's part of a much larger um, question about, you know, our, our overall nutrition. And then are there specific foods that are specifically damaging the teeth? Usually it's tying from my understanding to the, the acidity. Mm. You know, another interesting thing that was brought up in some studies about teeth is that like anthropologists look at teeth of ancient people and their bite and their teeth and their jaw are so beautiful. I know. And in the modern population, like we're all messed up, all the kids by age I don't know, 13, everybody's embraces. Well, I didn't get yeah. my braces until my 20s, but what is going on behind all that? Is it really the influence of diet and environment? Is that that we are not getting enough movement? Because I remember a study, oh, is it something price? I forgot the, the, the name. Here it is. <laughs> Dr. <laughs> that, I'm yeah. sending you guys to the library. <laughs> Um, Dr. Okay, okay. Weston, Weston A. Price, it, he has this, it's a massive book based on uh, an incredible amount of research that he did. And it's years ago, you know, 70 or 80 years ago. And you can see there's a lot of photographs of indigenous people, mostly what he studied it was around the globe, various mm -hmm. indigenous um, cultures and was really trying to identify where and when did us, did us in the Western world, especially, become so compromised as far as our jaw formation? How, yeah. why is it that so many people have crowded, crooked teeth in our culture? Everybody needs braces. Why do, why do we not have enough room in our jaws for our third molars, which are our wisdom teeth? Um, so it's a, it's a lot of information, but what I kind of distill it down to for my simple little brain is that there are a number of factors in our development that have changed. One of the main ones is just what we eat while we're in a developmental process. So as children, the chewing of hard, crunchy foods is part of what stimulates the growth of the jawbone. And we took to, you know, bottle feeding, and mushy foods, baby foods, um, 
you know, cooking our food, the introduction of just when we co we're cooking all of our vegetables, that's, that's relatively new in humankind. It's a relatively Western thing, processed foods, which are usually, um, you know, not only nutritionally deplete, but also uh, not very hard to chew. So just the, just that alone, of course, we don't breastfeed our toddlers till age three or four, which would be more ideal for the development of the airway and the, the face, the, the nasal passages, the jaw, the upper jaw, the palate. Um, that's one thing. The introduction of refined sugar into human diet is also highly correlated with this really demise of the development of our faces. So I think there's a lot there to be learned. And so what's happening now in our field is we're trying to make up for it with how do we help start, you know, people get back to good function? So everybody has their wisdom teeth extracted. I mean, it's a rite of passage almost in your teenage mm -hmm. years. Um, that's just become the norm. Um, of course, orthodontics is used that, that can, you know, usually help things a lot um, to make up for this lack of space that's in the jaws. But um, oftentimes teeth are removed in that process. So you're losing teeth in order to make room for the ones that are left. So it's a good, very good question. And it's a, it's a big topic, but it's an important one. And that Weston A. Price book, there's actually a um, foundation, Weston A. Price Foundation that has local chapters that have utilized also his nutritional paradigms. And a lot of it goes to kind of ancient nutrition, really getting into a lot of fermented foods, um, just a lot of things that have been mainstays in human diet over centuries that we've kind of lost in our industrialized food process. There's a chapter, I just have to put a shout out here in Denver, uh, a chapter of the Weston A. Price Foundation that has bi-monthly meetings. And I off, I just learned so much from the people that go there and from the speakers we have. So that's um, just another really interesting path to learn about. Oh my goodness, that's great that they're even here in Denver. Yay, that's wonderful. And somebody just asked me to do some healing energetically around all the places where you have um, root canals. And, and again, I want to say, I'm not like healing the root canal, but I can send some energetic light to protect you. So usually when it comes to light medicine, the cleansing light is, uh, the cleansing light frequency is silver, white, and blue together. So wherever you have root canals, so, so those of you who are really concerned because you have, you know, 11 root canals or three or one, so I'm just going to just tune into all of you who need this and then send you those rays of cleansing light. So white, pure white light, silver, and blue. Oh. Oh. And then all your worries and concerns about what's happening to your teeth and mouth, let's just bring that energy down a little bit. So bring your cortisol levels down. <sighs> and for those of you who have a lot of tension around your jaw and face, I'm going to send some energy around jaw and facial tension and grinding. Oh, I'm clearing all the underlying issues around that. Oh. And Susie, thank you for putting that information in the chat for everyone. Thank you so much. Oh. And what I'm feeling like doing right now is to go into that space of our Akashic records. That's the record of all lifetimes and find and ask that 
the most powerful microbiome you had in all lifetimes just be downloaded to you now because i understand that all the studies on microbiome says most people do not have as powerful a microbiome as people in past generations, which would make sense when you look at all the nuclear accidents we, we had in the last 30 years or 40 years, right? That destroy so much so that we don't have the same microbiome our ancestors had. So I'm gonna tap into your Akashic records, find that Akashic record that contains the energy of the most powerful microbiome you had in all lifetimes. Oh. oh, I haven't done this before, but let's see if I can tap into the, the space of our collective Akashic records and see the healthiest teeth you had in our lifetimes. Oh, geez, how many lifetimes ago was there? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 So let's find a clear, a simple way to clear toxins. And I'm just going to put that energy in your energy field for clearing toxins, anything that's toxic. So I'm putting just an energetic vortex in your energy fields, everybody, to energetically clear and cleanse anything that's been toxic to you, your energy. Oh, and that will support your microbiome and your immune system to restore its original function. Oh. Oh. And so many of you are so empathic and you don't even know this about you. But some of you are just taking in so much energy from the collective and kind of like, so it's that overload, just like this toxic overload for the body. There's that psychic overload of energy for your energy field. <sighs> so let me clear all that you know, psychic overload from all the fears that are going on in the collective, all the misinformation about health and healing, all the misinformations about just about everything. You know, and what? Dr. Dickerson and I both talk about is empowering people to trust that you can make your own choices about finding the right dentist, finding the right healer, finding the right person, listening to yourself and all that. And when it comes to appropriate dental care, that can be kind of rough. But so Dr. Dickerson, tell us how to go about for those of you, for those people who are nowhere near Denver and, sure. and probably not coming here in the next few days to see you or whatever, how would they be able to find a dentist who would respect whole body healing the, the way yeah. you have this deep understanding about whole body healing? That's a great question. I'm glad that we have a chance to talk about that. One aspect that I can that I know is true for many people is that we, most of us have uh, some history of trauma in our lives, some history of um, traumatic relationships, whether this life or another life. And I don't really understand this directly, but I do know that the oral environment 
is a place that can be a, a, a source of kind of a trigger for, for past trauma. Mm -hmm. And I think that oftentimes that shows up because people maybe put off the care that would help them to heal their mouth because there's a lot of anxiety that can come, come up uh, because of trauma. And there's a whole field of study about which teeth hold what type of trauma that, that I don't know super well, but I think, first of all, you just, it's, if you have that issue, it's really important to find a dentist who's sensitive to that and won't push to go too fast. We'll give you a chance to discuss things, understand things. So trauma informed dentistry is something that you maybe you might want to look for. Or just talk to friends and people that, you know, that have a dentist that's tuned into that, but to find a, a, a dentist who thinks more like this, they're there are a couple of really good resources, um, at least in the U.S. There's an organization called the IAOMT, IAOMT, and it is a um, International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxicology, and it it is a wonderful. Uh, it's where I began to learn about mercury safe processes. They have a um, certification process for dentists that's called the. You can become safe certified, S A F E, and so you can look for a safe certified dentist on their website, and know that the dentist that's going to go to that extent is is much more tuned in to whole body health as it relates to dental care. Um, there's an I A B D M is another organization that is a, dent, a kind of a holistic dental organization, and these these. Um, these organizations really do a great job of helping dentists get educated. And so that's, that those are some great resources. Then if you get the chance and you're meeting with a dentist, my message would be just realize that you are in a position to be an advocate for yourself. I think dentistry, the way we're trained is in traditional dentistry, isn't that different from medicine where you're learning to diagnose problems and rec make treatment recommendations and maybe give options, which is good. But when you come in with a, a view yourself about health, that's a little outside the traditional box, it's okay to, you know, ask certain questions for, for yourself. And to me, that's a very important part of it. Getting to know a new patient is really, we spend a couple hours on that first visit walking through what their primary goals are. What are they actually hoping for? What have been their challenges with their dental experiences, whether it's the treatment that was done or their emotional part of it? Um, what is their health status? We really walk through it in great detail. I want to make sure that they're not just out there floundering with ill health and not getting it tended to, because that's going to affect everything. And our treatment results need them to be really tuned in to their own their own microbiome, their gut health, their immune system health. And some people come in and they're really doing great and we can just move forward, but many people aren't. So I feel of my, I think about myself as kind of a connector of resources for great functional medicine care providers that are either in my area or, you know, there's a network, there's a great network all around, all around the world, really. So when you, if you feel like you can find someone where these kind of conversations are part of their normal structure, chances are you're going to be able to get to a good place and make some good decisions for yourself and have some, be in some caring hands that will usher you through the next steps and these difficult decisions. They aren't some, they aren't the kind of thing where you, where I feel like I can go into sort of this parent to child mode of, of maybe how I was trained to be a dentist, which is I'm the expert. I'm going to tell you what you need. A lot of people are told they need a root canal. They need blah, blah, blah. Well, maybe you need that, but it, what do you want to do? Like what, here are your options. Here are the consequences, not just to your mouth, but to your potential whole health. So I think do some research about your options in your area. And people sometimes have to travel. This is an emerging field. It's not something where you might find, you know, small towns way out in the middle of nowhere may not have resources like this, but some of them do. Some of my favorite colleagues are in small towns all over the United States and the Midwest and everywhere else. So um, yeah, I think you have to just 
advocate for yourself. And if it doesn't feel comfortable, then, you know, you can say your thanks and try, try a different approach. Yeah. And I have those questions that many people uh, have as well. Like I go to a regular dentist for my cleaning sometimes, and they're always so insistent on putting a lot of uh, fluoride. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I have that all the time. Yeah. And I do not know that somehow that can interfere with the calcification of your pineal gland. Is that true? Well, I don't know that we have actual scientific research of that. We might. I'm not sure of that. But what I do know about fluoride that's very well established is it is toxic. It oh. can affect your neurologic health especially in uh, developing children, it affects their neurological health. Their IQ is less if they have a lot of in ingestion of fluoride. And the thing is, it hasn't actually borne out with the high hopes that it came out with. And it's, it's now introduced into all our su water supplies. It's, you know, it's being ingested a lot and, and it hasn't really borne out to be that effective at reducing the decay rate. So there are definitely other options for recalcifying your teeth. Again, that's kind of a whole nother subject, but it does take me to like some of the new products that are out there that don't have fluoride, but they have something that's actually much more effective at helping remineralize your teeth that the product, the uh, ingredient that I look for is hydroxyapatite. Yeah, it's, I it's have actually, that toothpaste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is just one of the products that's available commercially that I really am liking these days. It's called Boca. Ella Mint is my favorite flavor. Yeah. But it's uh, if you look at the ingredients, it's every single ingredient is intentional. And it, I don't think there's anything in toxic in there. But because I saw some questions just about how can we care for our mouths, maybe it's a good time to just say a couple other things about that. Um, that I think people could start with right away is, um, you know, we, we do need to at least once a day, rem you know, do a good removal of the harmful pathogens our, that are collected on our teeth. So brushing and flossing aren't going to go away as a, as a means, but flossing for some reason has just been a bugger of a thing for a lot of people to incorporate. And once people get it, it's really not a big deal, but it's sometimes really hard for people. I don't know that I'm ever going to solve that problem in my lifetime as a dentist, but gosh, the research coming out about the new water pick type of um, water flossers is really showing that it can be as effective, if not more effective than flossing. I so, have a water pick. Good. Yeah. yeah there's a, um, yeah, there's a hydro flosser that I have that I like a lot. The water pick brand, water pick brand is awesome. You can just use plain water, or you could put a, a little bit of of my, of you know mouth rinse in there, very diluted, but you don't really need to. And it's just really going to uh, power wash the teeth. It uses um, pulsation, and it um, you really can't harm yourself with it. But you have to know how to use it correctly. That's where it ha helps to have a really good dentist or dental hygienist that can make sure you know how to use it because you have to aim it down at the gum line and and you can use warmer water if your teeth are sensitive so mm -hmm. between um you know the water picking and some some upgraded products the other um, site that i want to refer you to that i um get that i really think does a good job kind of sorting through the myths and things is called askthedentist.com and um, they kind of are under the umbrella of something called functional dentistry, which is basically a lot of the things we're talking about. I would say that particular site is also really making sure their their um, recommendations are, are do have research to back their their um, recommendations. But they have some great do it yourself uh, formulas on there. Uh, uh, one thing I really like is a way to do oil pulling that's a little more convenient. They have this um, they have this little recipe for making these um, like a or a oil pulling chew that's like made in ice cubes that you put in the freezer, and it has not, not just the um, coconut oil, but um, L arginine is turning out to be really beneficial. They have some other ingredients in that recipe that um, 
I think is a, a really kind of a cool way to incorporate the oil pulling if people are interested in that. Because oil, oil pulling is really nice because it thins out the biofilm, but it doesn't do kind of a carpet bomb on all of the microbiome or the plaque on your teeth. It just um, thins it out and, and it isn't going to kill the beneficial bacteria. So it doesn't, again, you also need to remove that bacteria once, once a day, but you don't want to completely annihilate it with some of these products that are out there with super strong toothpaste with the fluoride and the abrasion and um, kind of over, overpowered products that actually over time can disrupt the natural balance of the bacteria and, and microbes in your mouth. So I don't know if that's helpful, but it's maybe some things that people can do right away to just start getting it, getting the oral cavity healthier. But unfortunately, a lot of the questions that come through about root canals and stuff, there's not going to be an easy answer for that, that people need to do some research and, and really try to understand the, the, the problems with root canals and start making their own decisions about it because you know, the dentist can do an evaluation, a cone beam x-ray, which is a three-dimensional CBCT x-ray is a great tool for the dentist to look at what the health is in the bone around the teeth. Mm -hmm. um, again, it's just a piece of the puzzle. It's part of a diagnosis. Ultimately, there are, there are going to be, again, choices that, that patients need to understand and made with the eye for how is it going to affect your total health? And then how are you going to have a healthy comfortable, good looking, functional mouth at the end of it all. So these aren't necessarily easy. They aren't always easy problems, but it, you have to be able to talk it through with your dentist and look at, you know, problem solve together, look at the situation together, look at your highest priorities. And um, hopefully you can start making steps toward better dental health. Okay, good. Another question that I had was, uh, I used to put this thing called diatomaceous earth in my smoothies because supposedly it helps to remineralize your teeth. Mm -hmm. Do you recommend doing that? I, you know, I've always heard of that as more of a binder for toxins, but as far wow. as a remineralizing thing, I'm, um, I'm not sure about that. There are probably, mm -hmm. uh, there might be something to it, but that hasn't been something I've seen data about or I've seen really it's a good question though mm -hmm. and would you recommend uh i used to use i still do use once in a while um coconut charcoal to clean my teeth yeah i don't do it every week or anything like that but like maybe once every three or four weeks i do something like that yeah i think that there's probably good recipes out there for that the charcoal is is good. Again, it can be a little abrasive over time, but, um, wow. yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. For all those of you who may be interested, tell them about BioClay. I love that. The so you do bio yeah, I think the, when it gets to actually, you know, we're talking a lot about people coming in some difficult decisions. Where do you get started? When, when I actually get to have Use, utilize my skills is when we've made the decision about some dental care and then we get to do it. So um, I'm always trying to not disrupt the health of the teeth by the fact that I have to do the dentistry. So in other words, I'm always looking for the most minimally invasive way to, to help this person get what they need for the health of their teeth. So a lot of the methods that we've used traditionally in dentistry have their own side effect of causing more trauma to the teeth. And sometimes there's just no way around it. So I, you know, you think of a hot, when a person has a crown done on a tooth, crowns are necessary. Sometimes they replace the whole structure of the tooth, but there is a fair bit of grinding on the tooth itself in order to make that crown, which can be an additional trauma that tips that tooth over into not being able to heal. So that's when you get into the whole root canal question. So in the, in the vein of in improving people's smiles in the most minimally invasive way, that's where the BioClear technology comes in. It's really cool because it's just usually additive with these certain process that um, 
has in my practice replaced most of the cases that would be kind of a cosmetic concern where porcelain veneers might have been what we did in the past. But this is uh, less traumatic. It's um, has pros and cons. The composite has some more maintenance to it. It might need to be updated in, in 10 years or so. Um, but overall, it seems to be a really great addition, especially because we're really trying to not grind on the teeth any more than we need to. You know, just like you have certification for dentists who do all the things you do, I wonder about uh, oral hygienists. Is there certification for oral hygienists who are aware of how to take care of teeth and give an option besides fluoride? I haven't <laughs> found an oral hygienist who gives me a different option. <laughs> Well, you know, there is a holistic de uh, hygienist certification through the IAOMT that I told you about. Oh, okay. But I, I tell you what, those hygienists are few and far between, and they are worth everything. So if you find one, please, please send them to me, because uh, I am very much wanting to incorporate, they, incorporate that into my practice. The dental hygiene industry really took a, be a beating during the COVID era. I heard statistics of the you know, at least one and two years out from the, the uh, height of the pandemic, one third of the dental hygienists in our state didn't return to work. So just the pool of that in general is really difficult right now for dentists, for dental practices. But I do have a dental hygienist that I work, that works for me for a while. She's phenomenal on this. And she's in the Castle Rock area of Colorado. Um, she works independently and she made out um, a really cool mobile van. I think it's a Mercedes van that she built out and she has just a great uh, set of knowledge about helping people really nail down what's going on with their microbiome. Why are they having these consistent problems that might be with um, gum issues or decay and um, do, do does oral t DNA testing and saliva testing to really um, dial in the treatment protocols but she definitely would not be using fluoride. Um, she'd be using many times oxygen ozone and mm -hmm. different um, laser techniques to help uh, help people get healthy. So um, there are options out there. They're just a little tricky to find right now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That 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 is. It, it's fine. So why? What all these studies about how fluoride is not even healthy? Why aren't Dentists looking for better options and insisted on the same old things. I, I just don't get that. <laughs> Boy, I know. I think, uh, I don't know what, I think there's something about our training. You know, even when we're talking about oil pulling, that's an Ayurvedic technique that was established thousands of years ago when we didn't even have the scientific method. We didn't have controlled double blind studies. We had observation. So when humans have observed a cause and effect relationship of something over all that period of time, it's not like maybe it's, they always get it right. I mean, there's some things like techniques that have been used in ancient times that actually turned out to be disastrous, but some things have stood the test of time, but we're trained really so indoctrinated into the scientific method. And then, then you get into a situation where the American Dental Association, which has so many great benefits, but they once they endorse certain modalities and products, most dentists are really going to defer to those, you know, entities, governmental entities and the dental boards to tell them what's okay and what's within their scope and what they can talk about and what they can't. And our licenses are really dependent upon staying, not straying too far from those things that are told to us from above. So it is a fine line for a practitioner in a medical field or a dental field to be really open-minded and looking at, at other sources of information and in, in logically incorporating those with, you know, keeping the safety of the patient as the highest priority to try to straddle that line. And, you know, I think in the United States, it seems especially it's like an especial, especially greater amount of pressure on the practitioners than some other countries. 
that's part of why I ended up in Switzerland, because I knew that in the, the days after my surgery, I was going to have all kinds of different healing modalities that wouldn't be FDA approved here, but that I believe in, and I believed in for my health, you know, just hyperbaric oxygen chamber. That's, that's not that crazy, but there were different homeopathics that they used in my IVs. They, they were using detoxification through foot baths, which, you know, I don't know about the science on that, but it surely didn't hurt me. Um, so I think, Certain people are just more curious and want to bridge beyond and other people, other dentists just really want to stay within that zone of safety. And I think we need all of it. Like we need, the de we, we need dentists where well, there's a shortage of dentists now. So there's some really good dentists that are very traditional whom I respect greatly. They have ec excellent t techniques and so many different modalities and I learn from them. And then once we get talking there, if they're open, they learn from me. I think it's changing grace and everybody else, but it's, it's like, it's like the medical field is changing slowly. Yeah, that it's, it's really good to see the changes and, and what you said about all the stuff you were able to experience in the clinic mm -hmm. in Switzerland. Gosh, I wish we can bring that over here now. <laughs> you and me both. Yeah, well, you're going to make it. Ha well, you, you're kind of halfway there with all that you have to offer, you know, your biological yeah. dentistry service, your bio clear, which is so amazing. And then the bio aesthetics that you do. Yeah, just the way you talk about whole body health. So it's like, you're doing it all within legal limits. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah. honestly, there are some things I've tried that didn't stand the test of time that, but at least it, it didn't hurt anybody. You know, I've, there's some, some things that have come and gone that that's the same with anything, you know, but yeah. for the most part, I, I don't know. I think this, if you're in um, Grace's group, you probably are already thinking out, outside of a lot of normal boxes and you have a curiosity and you want to understand more about your health. So I think um, there's a, there's a lot of us out there. Yeah, that's good to know that the whole field is changing. And my goodness, there's so much information you give us today. Thank you so much for the, all the information and for giving people options and more hope about a different way yeah. to handle what has been, for some people, a life journey of pain. It sounds yeah. like there's some people who have uh, dental trauma from childhood on. So it's good to know that there's trauma informed dentistry, which is yeah. amazing. So for those of you who need to hear that and know that, know that you can find a dentist who has that training. So trauma informed dentistry. And of course, even if you're out of town, you can always come to Denver to see Dr. Dickerson because I know that you do have clients from out of town who come to see you yes. for BioClear and for a number of uh, things that you do. Thank you, Grace. I think as as I'm thinking about kind of wrapping up because there's so many um, subtopics that we could explore and that might be might be something we could look at down the road. But when I think about, you know, the things that I've found that keep people from moving forward with their dental care is usually a fear of what it's going to be feel like a fear of what it's going to cost a fear of, you know, they they're worried about the time it's going to take to try to get all this done. They don't know what they have to do. They don't know their options. So they're kind of stuck. A lot of people are feeling stuck or maybe the options that have been presented, they just can't quite stomach, but what I found is that by going through a, a, an organic process together, even with the first few steps, people can start feeling, I don't know, it's a strange term I've just made up myself, like their oral self-esteem. They mm -hmm. just, you know, just even taking positive action towards how to clean your mouth more properly. Just awesome. do the first thing that that is on the list and do, just, you know, sometimes I'll bring somebody in, we just do one simple thing in order to get a baseline of how we work together. Like you don't have to necessarily think about all of the huge, big problems. Sometimes you can just start with something simple and just start getting things cleaned up. That's a huge thing a lot of times. So I just want people to not feel hopeless 
or too afraid to move forward. It's just a matter of finding that dentist that you can click with and start moving forward because it really is essential to your health and to your, how you feel about yourself, how your smile is, how you chew, how you function. Our oral environment is so critical to, to our overall health. And uh, it's definitely worthy of, of not giving up. Stick with it. That's, yeah, that's an, a wonderful new term, oral self-esteem, you guys. Practice oral self-esteem. Yeah. Just get started with something. Like, I like that you mentioned the water pick. Now, that's something you can do on your own. And you can exactly. add essential oils to it. Uh, that would you guys might find a, um, I did a little Instagram post where I use that water pick to water my little, um, succulents. Cause you know, the water pick is just fun and, um, it's messy though. Like, you know, so I don't know. Yeah. That's, um, I have some Instagram, um, posts that, that might be helpful. Cause this is some, it's like little snapshots of a lot of these things we've talked about. So, um, yeah, just, kind of keep your eyes and ears open and start looking around. If you have any of these issues, um, there are answers out there. Yeah. And you also post uh, videos on your YouTube channel sometimes, right? Yeah. But with some information. So if you like to know more about Dick, Dr. Dickerson's work, YouTube channel is uh, Dr. Dickerson, right? Or I think it is. Yeah. I think it's just really my name. Yeah. Yeah. And also, uh, you have you post that on Facebook as well. So she's on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and of course her website, SharonDickersonDDS.com, where uh, you get to see the inside of her office and know more about all the services she offers. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Well, Thank I know so there much. are a lot of really specific questions here, and I don't know that a forum like this is a the time or place to try to get into an, an individual's specific diagnosis or problems, but I hope we've touched on some overarching things, and then maybe we're giving Grace some um, ideas for maybe any future, if we ever wanted to get together again, um, if this is something of interest to to you all and that are in her network. Um so, yes, a uh, pe couple of people keep asking about the Switzerland place, and um, I don't have a link right up, but it's called Swiss BioHealth. And, um, yeah, you have to just click on the English version, and their website is a wealth of information. That's also the, the, the place where I first saw the uh, – chart the meridian chart and teeth and all that yeah and since then i found that same thing all over the place in a yeah. different way so i will put that uh in the newsletter and all the resources you mentioned which are wonderful amazing i i just love reading dr weston price's research and stuff yeah as well as all the other resources you mentioned. Well, I haven't read all the resources you mentioned. Right, right. But I can't wait to get my hands on them because uh, there's a lot of resources to look into. There yeah. are. Yeah, I know you mentioned, Grace, that uh, we, perhaps you could compile some of the things we talked about into your next, into a newsletter or something like that um, so that people can reference it. Yes, and, and I think for those of you who like, let me know, email me, info at gracegharm.com, what else about dentistry you would like, uh, what else about this topic that you would like to know more about. And I know that some of you have asked about uh, BioClear, what are the benefits of BioClear? So I'm going to let Dr. Dickerson answer that. It's a series of methodologies that are designed to be uh, strengthening the teeth without additional trauma as much as possible. So it, it's using composite resin, which is the filling material that dentists use all the time, but with some different applications that are really creative and quite brilliant. It's, a, it's an organization I train with that's in Tacoma, Washington. Dr. David Clark is the owner and developer of this set of technologies. And he's just really kind of raised the bar, in my opinion, about the utilization of composite resin. And in my 
practice. It has replaced a lot of things that I used to do that were more traumatic to teeth with grinding things down and using porcelain. Porcelain is another great material. I use it a lot, but um, most of our fillings now on back teeth are, are fillings instead of crowns. Compared to 10 years ago, I'm doing literally one fourth of the crowns that I used to do. Um, again, porcelain veneers, because people have different cosmetic issues. They have gum recession. It leaves these black triangles at the gum line that are um, unsightly and makes it hard to keep things clean. So there are technology, there's techniques for really, it's called veneers, bioclear veneers um, that take some time to do in the chair, but I'm not, usually people aren't even numb. They're not grinding. I'm not grinding on the teeth. And really in one day we can have a, a really cool makeover of the, the top or bottom front teeth. And so that's kind of a summary of bioclear in yeah. um for those of you who have had like what I had, I had some tetracycline stains and those black triangles. And I can't believe the difference after having that done because I was self-conscious about my tetracycline stains, which every dentist has said, nothing you can do about it, honey. I'm like, oh, can't stand that answer to everything. Yeah. <laughs> and bio right. actually help with that. Well, <laughs> totally. I'm glad. <laughs> Yeah. Plus we had fun doing it. And we had fun. And it was yeah. actually fun. <laughs> it was. I don't know how people can't believe it, but once we get into our flow and we trust each other and we've committed on something that we're doing together, it, it it's hard work for sure, but it can, it should be lighthearted. It should be, you know, have people having a, a good time with a good energy flow that's, that's what I'm all about in my life. Cause I'm at my office a lot. I want things to be flowing and moving well without a lot of, um, frustration and, and trauma. So that's what the whole concept for me is about for my own sake. And for the people that are there, I just thank you all for the chance to chat. I'm really humbled and heartened that there are this many people interested because when you're kind of in an alternative world and, and especially in my profession, sometimes I feel a little bit out there, like isolated. I have good colleagues, but they're, they're not somebody I'm talking to every single day. Um, you know, you learn all these things, you try implementing them. I kind of on my own out there. So I just feel kind of, I don't know, a sense of community and support, just even being here with you all today. So I know it's getting up to our time limit, Grace, but I just want to thank everyone for your attention. And I'm so glad, so thankful that there's this much interest. Yeah, well, thank you so much. It's a total privilege to have you here and to just have all this amazing information and knowing that there's hope, there's different options. Those two things, hope and options yes. for teeth is like Amen. life changing. And yes. just this deep understanding that you have that many people in the alternative healing community have is that everything is holistic. Everything impacts other things. And, mm -hmm. and you just know that, which is so nice to, to be able to have um, a dentist who understands that because I've been laughed at a lot for <laughs> how I understand things. So yeah, I find it's a relief to be able to find people like yourself that I can talk to, which is so rare. And, and, and I have been laughed off by practitioners before. And I know that many of you who are into alternative healing, you feel like there's very few people you can talk to about things like this. So I think that it's a win-win overall to have work with you and to have you here and meet everybody here. And I know that you mentioned uh, a guest who, a, a chiropractor, and yeah, you know, like everybody um, to have a chance to talk. So, well, maybe he can join us next now. time. He had to, his uh, connection dropped off. He lost his signal, but oh, yeah, okay. maybe another time we can bring Dr. Ben on. He has made more connections with people's teeth and the ailments they're having in their body than any chiropractor I've ever talked to. He's phenomenal from Dr. Ben Locklear from Mangan, M-A-N-G-U-N, Oklahoma. I mean, I would go to, I would go to him for his IVs and his healing practices. He's an upper cervical um, chiropractor that is phenomenal. Like I say, some of us are peppered into these small towns, these rural areas. 
Wonderful. So we should yeah. definitely have another get together sometime to go maybe into the more specifics of healing teeth themselves. Because I know that what all the experience you have, not only with, you know, procedures, you don't separate that you deal with the whole human being. And then mm -hmm. you can talk to us about toxic overload. And so many people deal with uh, chronic fatigue and right. autoimmune stuff so maybe on the next call we can just jump yeah. in right there because that is so huge and, and that is uh i think at least 80 percent of the people who responded talk about root canals and, yes uh, chronic illness and autoimmune stuff and that just really tugs at my heart and and yeah. then you go to your doctors who give you almost no answer or antibiotics, which can mm -hmm. make things worse. So I, I feel like that's a huge thing to talk about because you overcome so much. And right. you mentioned your own stuff with the autoimmune, well, with uh, chronic fatigue and, right. and, and such. And so I know that everybody who has had that issue with tiredness is breathing a sign of relief that they can turn things around because right or yours you share about how you right. turn around so that's huge and thank and, you for that thank yes. you for willing to share your own journey the informational stuff but more importantly being vulnerable enough to share about your own journey what you've been through what you had to overcome to be who you are which is phenomenal and amazing oh, thank, thank you thank you it's my pleasure there's a whole other issue that was related to the tmj and the bite that's actually my whole another aspect that's a specialty that I deal with a lot. So we can, maybe we can um, address some of those things too. Another time. Definitely. Oh my God. Yes. So I feel like this is just the tip of the iceberg <laughs> as the saying goes, and we can go into a deep dive in so many directions, but what I picked up on from uh, the people who responded and other messages in the chat in your story is the number of people who have had issues with toxicity that's challenging the immune system, making them tired. I mean, I definitely want, we will all want to see someone get their life back, literally. Yes, you know, exactly. Your dental health allows you to get your whole life back, uh, taking care of those mercury fillings and changing them and cleansing all the toxins. It's to remarkable. The toxic overload, right? Yeah. It's some remarkable to see some people's health really turn around and come alive when we can work with them and their other providers and, and sequentially go through a, a healing process, including their dental health. It's, it's what I'm, it's what I'm here for. So yeah, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That is so amazing. Thank you so much for your time, your expertise, and just sharing all that you share with us today. Yeah. I'd love to invite you back where we go into a deep dive uh, into, well, whatever we're going to go into. Yes. <laughs> and thank you everybody for being here today. Absolutely. You been so amazing. So, I will connect with you all soon about uh, the next step going forward, you guys. And thank you, the person who say I'm almost in tears to hear this because I felt deep in my soul. There's another answer, sending you all love. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Whoever put that message in, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you guys, there will be a replay on YouTube. I'm just going to stop the recording right now.